365 On Your Side presents Kaleidoscope, focusing on people who make a difference in Northeast Ohio communities. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast again. Vice President of the Cleveland Browns Foundation, Renee Harvey, is here today, and she's going to give us an update on activities for 2018. We'll hear from also, we'll hear from the photographer, Matthew Green. He's principal at Matthew Green Photography and also the official photographer for the nonprofit organization Hope for Cabingo. Matthew will share with us how he got involved with the organization and with the people of Uganda. And later on the broadcast after that, the president of Junior Achievement for Greater Cleveland, Joe Fall Haber and Program Director Al DeFranco will talk about the mission of that organization, Junior Achievement, and its impact on the lives of young people. Good morning again. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope. As we always say this year, in our 18th year on this broadcast, we're awfully proud of that. We're off, awfully proud of Renee Harvey also. She's Vice President for the Cleveland Browns Foundation, which is the foundation arm, obviously, Leon, of the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> it's great to <laughs> hey, see Renee, you. What's the foundation do, generally speaking? So uh, the Cleveland Browns Foundation is part of our overarching Browns Give Back, which is our community platform for the organization. Mm -hmm. um, as an organization, we really have three pillars, and that's education, youth football, and our first in 10 volunteer platform. Yeah. The foundation really focuses on education, and mm -hmm. our vision is to ensure every child has access to a high quality education and our mission is really to try to remove those barriers and provide opportunities for students. Well that's a wonderful a wonderful idea and it's a wonderful thing that you do all of the oh, Cleveland Browns. Fortunate. This is the 19th year for the foundation's golf tournament. It is. Everything going okay? It is. The event took place in May at Westwood Country Club. It's a it's a really remarkable event. It's uh, presented by Key Bank, pre Key Private mm -hmm. Bank rather. Yeah. Um, it's an amazing event for a couple of reasons. One, our entire organization is there from our ownership, Dee and Jimmy Haslam, JW, uh, is also there. Um, our entire player roster is there. Oh. Um, our coaches, our staff go is out there in droves. But it's two two real events. It's the golf side, uh, which is you can imagine. Imagine four celebrity or uh, four corporate golfers with one celebrity, but the best part I think is what we call dog pound games. And so uh -huh. the the players who are not golfing actually come over and participate in activities and games with about 230 yeah. uh, students from Cleveland Metropolitan School District as a way to um, reward them for improved attendance. As we always said when I was going to college, this is a big do. This is this is a, <laughs> this a is big, a big thing. This it is, is a big, big thing. It's a, a big, lot of fun. It's okay. a great event. You're also involved with with the Ginn Academy, it's the Life Coaches Program? We are. So, so Ginn Academy is the only all-male uh, public high school in the state mm -hmm. of Ohio, started in 2007 by uh, Coach Ted Ginn, mm -hmm. um, really meant to provide mentorship for all of the young men at the academy, all of the scholars. And so they have what they call life coaches, and those yeah. life coaches are there to support their academics, their attendance, behavior, and social-emotional. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were able to invite them out to a day at our training facilities you see on the yeah. video here. Uh, 40 of their juniors came to our facility for a tour and we also did a mini career day and so the students got to have the opportunity to speak with several different members of our staff representing a cross-section of our entire company yeah. so hopefully exposing them to fields that they may or may not have thought about um, whether it was marketing special events player engagement youth football mm -hmm. even creative design yeah. and social media so really hopefully uh, opening their eyes to some uh, potential careers yeah. that they might be interested in. Not all of us can play football or perhaps mm, want not. to play football, <laughs> but there are other jobs. Absolutely. I didn't have the size for football, <laughs> but there are other things that we can do, and that part of that, that career placement uh, yes. program that you've got is certainly wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. The Marion Motley Scholarship. What's the goal for that scholarship? I remember Marion Motley being one of the yes. star ball players for the Cleveland Browns yes, back in the day. Yes, he was. Very honored to have a scholarship in his name that started back in 2005. Uh, since then, we've actually awarded 24 scholarships. We award two each year, uh, really designed for highly motivated students who um, embody the characteristics of Marion Motley. And we award, again, two scholarships at the $10,000 level. Um, and the students need to write or, uh, essays about um, perseverance and things that they've challenged and obstacles in their life. Um, and we really target 
first generation students, um, college students, as well as families that are, have limited income. Uh, really proud to say that 92% of our scholarship recipients have graduated college in five to six years, yeah. which is much higher than the, the average. Do you, uh, uh, what's the timeline for, for, for youngsters who may want to get in on this scholarship? So the, the scholarship is open now. Uh, they can go to college now gc.org, mm -hmm. which is College Now Greater Cleveland's website. That's who we facilitate the, the scholarship through. Um, under Find Scholarships, they can go online and find all, a whole list of scholarships they can apply for, and the Marion Motley Scholarship will be listed there. Um, and we will, again, award two scholarships, so any incoming senior can apply now, and um, they'll be awarded yeah. uh, later this fall, and we'll have the two recipients on field and recognized at a home Browns game too, which Wouldn't is a lot of fun. Nice. Celebrate their hard work. Right at the 50-yard line is being, that's right. And have all of those <laughs> lot of 45,000, 50,000, whatever. Staring right back at you. Oh, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Cheering for them. Speaking of websites, if we can go to clevelandbrowns.com slash Browns Give Back. More Correct. information on everything right. we're talking about, you can find, and we've got that at the bottom of the screen. What have the recipients of past scholarships said to you? What, what, what have they said to you? We've heard things such as, um, I would not have been able to attend college without the scholarship. Mm -hmm. This uh, afforded my family uh, to alleviate a little pressure that they felt um, mm -hmm. with the, the cost of college, um, allowed them to go to maybe a, a better school than they were hoping to get into as well. So mm -hmm. um, that they simply had a better opportunity to achieve their dreams. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. Renee Harvey is vice president for the Cleveland Browns Foundation, and as we, she's one of our regulars here. And as we always end our broadcast with you, we always ask you, uh, the Cleveland Browns, the football side, the <laughs> X's and the O's, the Hugh Jackson, the running backs, the defense, the, 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 the teams, all, are we going to be okay? We are going to be great. So they're on break now and revving, resting up and getting ready for training camp that'll start in a couple of weeks. And I know there's a lot of buzz and energy in our building, and I'm excited to see it. Well, I'm glad to hear. We got a quarterback coming in and all that. This is the year. This you is the told year. me this. <laughs> Renee Harvey, many thanks. Thank Renee you. Harvey is vice president for the Cleveland Browns Foundation. It's always good to see you, Renee. You too, Leon. Tell Thank everybody you. over there at the, at the Haslam family and, and, and the Cleveland Browns we said hi. Absolutely. Okay. Thank good, you. Good to see you, my friend. I'll be back in just a moment. We will look at the the faces of Kabingo through the eyes of a photographer, Matthew Green. I'll do this first, back in a moment. You're in touch with Kaleidoscope. I'm Leon Bibb. Cleveland photographer Matthew Green participated in a mission trip to the Ugandan village of Kabingo in 2010. He's since become the official photographer for that nonprofit organization, Hope for Kabingo. Matthew Green is here to talk about his organization as a photographer, his work as a photographer, and the impact his work is having as he helps the people of Kabingo in Uganda. Good to see you, Matthew Green. Good to see you. What's the, what is the overall mission of the group, Hope for Kabingo? Hope for Kabingo is all about this now 3,000 person village in the southwestern portion of Uganda. Uh, when we went there in 2010 for the first mission trip, uh, they basically had, had nothing. The, there was no foundational uh, components in place. So now uh, we've been able to elevate the, the pillars of uh, infrastructure in education, mm -hmm. health care. They're bringing electricity and water now. And the students that worked in the original um, clinics in that first mission trip are now actually participating as pharmacists, nurses, counselors, mm -hmm. and many other roles. Yeah. So it's helping them stand on their own feet. You have brought, you have helped facilitate change in the African nation of Uganda, certainly in this village. We have, and they've done a lot themselves. So wow. it's a great collaboration. Yeah. You are the official photographer for Hope Correct. Correct. You I've brought gone some, you three brought some, times, you, yeah. You've been there three times? Right. And you brought some photographs with us. You call it the faces of Kabinko, right? Right. I've had it, I just recently had an exhibit at a, a art gallery in Cleveland, and I'll be doing it again in the fall at, at uh, mm -hmm. one in Hudson, uh, and over those three um, visits that I've, uh, I've gone on, I've taken a lot of family portraits, school portraits, as well as um, very intimate close-ups uh -huh. of, of these villagers, uh, and by virtue of just getting, building a relationship with them. Youngster right here. Right. Tell me about this photograph here. Interesting. 
Yes, um, so the photographs, um, I also not only have been doing portraiture, but I've also been doing, focusing on the key areas uh, of where we need help still. And water is the biggest uh, area at this point in time. Mm -hmm. We have a five-year program going on now, uh, and it's a collaboration with Engineers Without Borders, uh, where we are actually um, wor working to get water there because they carry pails of, of water for miles to their huts and homes. Clean today. water is a luxury. It is. It what is. We, what we see is just every day. And it's they don't luxury. have it yet. They don't. And you're working. So you want the public to, 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 to help out with, with, uh, with uh, 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 this organization, Hope for Cabinga. That would be a wonderful thing. What, what can people do to, 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 to well, get involved? Well, we have a, a, a really well made website, hopeforcabingo.org, mm -hmm. and there is a section on it uh, specifically about water, and you can, you can make a donation, you can help right there. Yeah. I know you brought a piece of videotape with you, <clears throat> a piece of uh, a video, I should call it, sure. with you. Let, let, let's roll that. The control room ha has access to, to that video. T tell me about this as, as we look at, at least look at this video. Yeah, this was taken in 2012, uh, and it was, we're starting to, at that time, starting to see some of the progress. Schools were starting to be built, and these were, um, basically, we were being serenaded by the school students. Uh, and I actually sort of fell in love with that little girl on the left mm -hmm. uh, at that moment. Hadn't met her, but she was one of the lead singers, and she yeah. had so much personality that I've been sponsoring her since then, and just met her now last year. Uh, so it's great to have a relationship. What is their feelings for, for you and, and the Hope for Cabango and the others who are, go with you? What do they say? We have a love of each other. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're great people. They've got a lot of spirit, and, and now they have hope. Yeah. And it's, it's been it's really been a collaboration between they and us yeah. uh, because we're now helping them there they've built up microfinance with some help and they now have a, a basket weaving program where uh, a group of ba ladies weave a thousand baskets a year and distribute them here in the states yeah. and they raise a, a good good amount of money on that and they're these ladies are now opening a bank where they can help mm -hmm. others can we see some of these photographs on the website hope for cabango the uh, photographs yes. that you yeah. took them. and you've got an exhibit too going on right. as well right right exactly mm -hmm. so i had a, i just had an exhibit and i'll be doing it again in september uh, in Hudson at Hudson Fine Art and Framing Company uh, that, in later that month. But we'll, you can we'll learn about that. that on my website. Well, on your website, if right. we go to MatthewGreenPhotography.com, we've got that on the screen as well. Thank Correct. you, Control Room. MatthewGreenPhotography.com. More information on everything we're talking about. And by the way, Green has an E on the end. G-R-E-E-N-E. -E. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay, my, my pleasure. Also, there's a photograph that you brought kind of showing some of your local work. I'd like to put that on the air. Tell me about this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of, of the beautiful portrait. Mm -hmm. uh, I, everyone has their, you know, their iPhone uh, and what I refer to as disposable selfies are taken every single day yeah. and they're gone up, to so they go up to social media and we all forget about it. But I don't think enough people take those important milestone photos through the course of their lives. So here's a mother and daughter uh, that I took uh, uh, for Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this photo was something that the, that child will appreciate for the rest of her life. We've got to do what my parents did and what I did certainly years ago, have a photo album. Right. You've got to print out some of those pictures and right. put them where the family can look at them. Exactly. My parents are deceased now. They're both mm -hmm. passed on. Mm -hmm. But I've got the photo album from the family of right. all of us growing up and my right. parents even growing up. Right. That's special stuff. That is special stuff. And, and I refer to my work as wall portraits because because I wanted to have that uh, amount of, you know, be elevated that much, mm -hmm. and so it's important enough that you want to put it on your wall and admire it and then hand it down to future generations. Words of wisdom from an official photographer for Hope for Cabingo and principal Matthew Green Photography. Many thanks for being on the broadcast. Thank you so much. And for, for bringing your me. advice about what we need to do with our own photographs. Thanks. Let's get some help for hopeforcabingo.org. Send some money in and help this organization as it helps the people of Kabingo, Uganda. Thank Many you. Thanks, Matthew. Good to All see right. you, my friend. Great be seeing well. you. I get the picture now. Very good. I'll take a break. I'll be right back. I'm
I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope. Always glad to have you with me on this podcast. Junior Achievement of Greater Cleveland is helping teenagers prepare for their futures. The president, Joe Fallhaber, and program director, Al DeFranco, are both here today to talk about Junior Achievement, its mission, its partnerships with local companies, its teaching children about financial literacy and exposing them to careers in science, technology, and mathematics, and probably a whole lot more. Joe. Fall, Fallhammer, president on the left, Al DeFranco on the right. Good to have you both here. Good gentlemen. morning, Leon. Let's start with you, Joe, since you are Mr. President. Tell me, what does what's the overall mission sure. of Junior Achievement? Our overall mission is to inspire and prepare young people to succeed in the global economy. And really what that means is building the bridge between the classroom and life after school. So really getting these mm -hmm. kids exposed to uh, careers that exist in our community, uh, preparing them with the skills that they need to pursue those careers, and ultimately ultimately helping develop those relationships with our local organizations um, that we partner with on a daily basis. Yeah. Al, I would think that would mean opening up their minds to the possibilities of what you can be when they are young. Absolutely. Correct? That's, that's what we want education to be. It should be about preparing our young people for the real world. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do is bring volunteers as true guest speakers in the classroom to talk about financial literacy, entrepreneurship, and what we call career or workforce readiness. You know, you're reading my mind because I was having a conversation with somebody the other day about the importance of young people learning financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Old people learning it too, those who may not have picked <laughs> it up, about how to make money and hold on to money. Right. right, and what we do is we run the gamut from in first grade teaching the differences between needs and wants to young people to 11th, 12th grade where we teach them about true financial planning, budgeting, what credit and debt really is so that if you yeah. go to college, what that scholarship will do compared to what that loan might do to your future mm -hmm. and talking to them about what all those things yeah. are through the lens of a volunteer and not just the teacher right. who they hear from every day. We'll talk about volunteers in just a mm -hmm. bit in a minute. I want to bring in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Yeah. That's the coming thing. Huh? Absolutely. It is all, it's already here. It's already here uh, and it's so important for our kids to get exposed to those uh, careers early on and when, uh, when we can facilitate relationships with organizations that are headquartered right here in our greater Cleveland community like Parker Hannafin, Eaton, Rockwell Automation, and really get these kids exposed, not just to the careers of today, but the careers of tomorrow, yeah. uh, and help build those soft skills so that they're equipped uh, to successfully pursue yeah. them after high school. How do kids get hooked up to, uh, 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 or linked up, I should say, to uh, uh, a junior achievement? Absolutely. So we generally work through uh, superintendents, principals. Uh, we work on a building-to-building -building level with over 250 schools in our area. Uh, and really uh, coordinate most of our activities with teachers and principals um, and serve about mm -hmm. 40,000 students a year here in Greater Cleveland. Teenagers? Uh, K through 12. Okay, well you've got, you've got the whole group. Yeah, so really from, Anybody in the school system. That's right, so really from kindergarten through 12th grade, I think the majority of our programming is really in that yeah. early uh, K to three um, age group. Yeah, Al, you mentioned the word volunteers a little bit ago. Tell me about that, you need volunteers? We always need volunteers. We want volunteers to be able to bring their own personal perspective into the classroom to teach those young people about the topics that we talked about earlier, especially financial literacy. I would rather hear from someone such as yourself, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bibb, if you ever wanted yeah. to volunteer in our classroom, <laughs> to come and you would talk about, we always talk about in our office, if you ask a third grader to compile a list of what jobs they know, they might come up with eight to ten. Yeah. And then, and they might not, they might not know exactly what a president of a nonprofit does or someone who has the great experience that you have. But you being able to come into the classroom and talk to them for five or 10 minutes about what you do and then talk about your experience in financial literacy, your experience with entrepreneurs, that's going to do wonders for them in terms of their own personal growth and development. Yeah. Is there a cost for the youngsters to get involved in the junior achievement program? Not at all. That's the great work that we all do in terms of, and really Joe leads the way, and our development team in raising funds throughout our community trying to make sure that the important programs that we bring to the classrooms and to our school districts are at no charge to the schools and yeah. to the students. I got a phone number I want to put on the screen before we get to a special project that they may want to talk about. 216-861-8080 as you see at the bottom of the screen or you can go to jacleveland.org. J-A. 
Junior Achievement, jacleveland.org. More information on everything we've been talking about. Anything you're particularly proud of that you want to highlight in our last minute or Most so? Most recently, I think we, uh, we have an event called JA Field Day. Uh -huh. uh, it's our career symposium. It takes place on an annual basis. It'll be uh, upcoming, uh, this upcoming year, it'll be in its fifth year now. Uh, thanks to the generosity of our title sponsor, Key Bank, and so many of our other corporate partners, we bring about 500 students down to Cleveland Public Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to, again, the generosity of the city of Cleveland for helping facilitate that um, for a day of immersive career readiness yeah. uh, experiences. And these kids go through career fair workshops. Uh, they go through JA programming and rotate through a series of activities throughout the day that are experiential. Uh, so that kids can really touch mm -hmm. and feel the careers that exist right here in our backyard. I got five seconds. When's the date of this? The date upcoming will be the third week of April 2019. Okay, we'll look for it on the website. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Okay. God, I wish I could be a teenager again. I'd do it all <laughs> right. over again. Don't we all? <laughs> I got, I'd make some changes too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Joe Fallhaber and Al DeFranco, both of Junior Achievement are great. Thank Cleveland. you, Liam. It is a national organization, by the way, and these are the Cleveland representatives. I'll take a break. I'll be right back. Sharing and Gibson of the Urban League with commentary after this. Time now for that segment we call Morning Exchange. That's where Sharon Gibson of the Urban League offers commentary. Marsha Maccabee is off today. Yes, Sharon Gibson is pinch hitting today. Yes. What's on your mind at the Urban League? So we want to invite the public to our community fair on Friday, July 27, 12 mm -hmm. to 3 p.m. Yeah. We've partnered with Buckeye Health Plan and Community Tri-C Community College to present the um, community fair yeah. so we'll have games yeah. food music and most importantly we're giving away school supplies for back to school so what do you uniforms. have what do you have to do to get in line to get all of this it's a free ev event you mean um, you just show up yeah just show up from 12 to 3 try C's parking lot number one I believe it's located East 22nd and Community College right. Avenue this, this is on the Metro campus metro the campus, downtown, downtown Cleveland campus yes. this is vital stuff for I mean this is important stuff important I mean, you, stuff. you get some school supplies school, school supplies, bags backpacks We've received um, backpacks from the Cleveland Browns organization who was also here. So we're pretty excited. This is our first community uh -huh. event. Now, the, the, this is all part of in keeping with the spirit of the Urban League Our all along, event. ever yes. since 101 years ago when you got started or yes. whatever it was, to, to, to help the community in many, many ways. Yes, and and have some fun Absolutely. along the way. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think about that? I, I'm excited. We get a chance to meet the community, the our uh, constituents that we serve. Um, as you know, we're hands-on. So it's a way for our staff to give back mm -hmm. and be involved in the community. So we're actually looking forward to well, hosting the event. Once again, it is the Community Fair, sponsored by the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, along with Tri-C. Tri-C and Buckeye Health Plan. Okay, and it's going to be at the parking lot number one, Cuyahoga Community College, yes, the Metro, Metro campus. campus. That's the downtown campus. Yes. Okay, many thanks. Thank you so Good much. Good to see you, Sharon. Thank you as well. Tell everybody at the Urban League we said hi. We'll do. And we'll say, I'm Leon Bibb. Be well. This has been a presentation of News 5's Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. Uh -huh.